How does the Zoom H6 Essential sound? Let's find out. Freebeat. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to Freebeat. Today's patron shout-out goes to Jean-David Palmer. Thank you so very much for the support. Let's get started. This is the... Oh, sorry. <laughs> this is the Zoom H6e. It's a portable audio recorder from Zoom, part of their H, or Handy series. Earlier this year, Zoom refreshed that series by releasing the Zoom H1e, the H4e, and this, the H6e, replacing the H1n, the H4 slash H5, and the H6. Now, the major upgrade in the new lineup comes in the form of 32-bit float audio. I'm not an audio engineer, but basically it means that you don't have to set gain levels before recording, and you don't really have to worry about clipping. I've actually had the older Zoom H5 for, I think, over four years at this point now, and it has put in a lot of work for the channel. It was my primary audio recorder in the early days, and it's continued to be my main portable audio recorder up until I got the H6e. Now, speaking of getting the H6e, this video is not sponsored by Zoom. They didn't send me this either, nor did I even get this from Zounds. This was actually a gift from a fan of the channel who wished to remain anonymous, so I will just say you know who you are, and once again, thank you so very much. Okay, so like I said, I've been using the H5 pretty heavily uh, for several years, and over that time I've developed several complaints. First of all, the USB mini jack broke within a year of me owning this, meaning that power could only come from batteries, and that file transfer had to be done via SD card. Second, the controls for the UI were pretty rough. It's just this like up and down scroll wheel thingy that's spring loaded. It always snaps back to the center position. And to click enter, you just have to wait till it's centered and then click it in. It's really awkward and it makes for a lot of incorrect or just straight up missed inputs. Third, this thing has some of the noisiest preamps I've ever heard in a device. I mean, you really can't have any of these knobs here set to anything over 30% before you get this nasty hissing noise. It's it's pretty ridiculous, honestly. I've made do with it uh, throughout the years, but I've had to uh, attack the audio pretty heavily um, in terms of noise reduction, and in some cases uh, there was nothing I can do and I just couldn't use the audio. Um, so definitely a big complaint. So those were my main complaints with the H5. Let's see how the H6e addresses those. Well, right out of the gate, it's pretty easy for the first one. Uh, the H6e uses USB Type-C, pretty much solves the USB issue there. We all know Type-C is far sturdier and more reliable than just about anything else out there currently, so yeah, that's an easy one. Next is the UI, and this time, while we still get a wheel, it's just like a basic scroll wheel, just up and down, and then a separate enter button. If you can see, I'm scrolling around the bottom here of the screen, and let's go into, I don't know, USB. There we go. See how easy that is? Much, much better. Another uh, slight upgrade actually is that instead of taking full size SD, which I believe is limited in size, I want to say four gigabytes. It might be bigger than that. But now we've got micro SD in there and I've got a 32 gig card in there. No problems, uh, which is great. Okay, so now what you're all probably really here for, the audio. Uh, honestly, when I first plugged in my headphones to the H6e, my heart sunk because I heard a lot of noise. However, upon exporting the audio files themselves from the H6e to my computer, I discovered that they sounded much cleaner. So enough talk, let me show you. We're gonna start off with a sound clip of me uh, playing my electronic drum kit, my Roland TD-17, uh, plugged directly into the H6e, running on batteries. All these uh, audio tests are going to be on batteries. Uh, stereo inputs. Here you go. Moving on, next up I recorded the MicroFreak, which is a mono synth, and a device that I've actually had trouble capturing at a decent level in the past. Let's go ahead and listen to how the H6e did.
pretty good. That might be the best recording I've gotten off of Micro Freak, uh, maybe ever, actually. All right, next up, we've got another synth, but this one is stereo. This is the Korg NTS-1. Uh, this one I've also had problems getting usable levels out of before, so let's see how it does. Yeah, pretty solid. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, and finally, we've got a real snare drum. Now, I only had a few minutes to actually set up and record this test. It was in my in-laws' uh, kind of makeshift barn. Uh, so I, I really didn't have time to tune the snare very well or anything, just a heads up. Um, I did two tests, one with the built-in XY stereo mic set to mono mode. Uh, and by the way, this is a module, so you can... It's kind of awkward. There we go. You can take it off, and they will sell additional capsules here, um, including two more inputs to actually give you a true six inputs. Uh, but yeah, one of them is recorded with the XY mic uh, uh, set to mono mode, and then the other test was with a Shure SM57 plugged into one of the XLR combo jacks. Have a listen. Felt good to play a snare drum, that's for sure. Okay, so it's not terrible, and I do want to say that's just raw, no processing or anything like that. Um, I do think with proper mic setup, you know, more time to set it up, better drum tuning, and a little bit of post-processing, I'd imagine it could get way better than that. And you do have six inputs, especially once we get that uh, module up there. So six mics on a, you know, a small, like, four-piece drum kit, that's pretty solid. And again, I do want to stress, that's 32-bit float audio, so I literally just plugged the mic in and hit record. That was it. The main takeaway from all of this, for me at least, is that Zoom has significantly reduced the noise present in the previous H-series models, uh, like this guy over here, and have made a very usable product while still keeping the lineup affordable. The H1e goes for $99.00. The H4E goes for $199, and the H6E here goes for $299. Uh, those are all U.S. Um, I particularly feel that the 4E, the H4E, is going to sit in a pretty lovely sweet spot for most folks. That's four-track multi-recording, 32-bit float audio, uh, $199 U.S. That sounds pretty good. And yes, uh, before we wrap up, I do already have a complaint about the H6E. You can link two of the four mono inputs to make a stereo pair, but you can only link inputs one and two or three and four. The jacks for these are located on opposite sides of the unit, making a stereo recording session look like this. It's just kind of silly, and I'm sure it's something that could be easily fixed in a firmware update, though. 
I do hope you found this video informative or at least entertaining. If you did, be sure to leave a like on it. If not, you can always leave a dislike. That's okay, too. Doesn't hurt my feelings, just makes me try that much harder next time. Either way, be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. Thank you all so very much for watching. Thanks for being here. I said those backwards. <laughs> oh, well. Have a good one, everybody. Bye.